good morning to one and all in the previous class we discussed different topics related to this geosynthetics and some of the advantages by the utilization of these geosynthetics to the field of geotechnical engineering to improve soil properties and other some properties but now in today's class we have to discuss about different philosophies and utilizations of this geosynthetics in different applications how this the ground improvement technique is normally utilized for the purpose of improvement of structural parameters first of all we need to have some differential settlements in the structure to control those differential settlements we need to go for this ground development technique especially by simply compaction and this dewatering techniques and the soil stabilization techniques those three are the main philosophies used for the purpose of this controlling of settlement of ground next one is the it decreases directly life span whenever these settlements takes place automatically due to those settlements the structure have to face huge quantities of torque internal uh, inequality of forces and uh, these cracks automatically due to those three options there may be some failure will be started day by day day by day those failures will be improved automatically at some time the total structure will be in a condition of falling position so that to control those kind of uh, situations we have to go for this uh, preliminary techniques before constructing a structure we have to observe the ground properties and then we have to use some of these ground improvement techniques next one is the increase the maintenance cost we are not using all these conditions prior to the construction of a structure automatically due to those uh, any availability of this ground properties to the structure automatically we have to use more quantities of maintenance that means in the previously we have discussed it decreases the structural life whenever the structural life decreases means automatically the structure failure have to be observed in different positions to control those failures to the structural parts automatically we have to use a lot of uh, these materials as a replacement some of the structures having a column failure in some of the structures beam failures and uh, this slab failure and uh, this walls and other structural parts all those are simply failing one by one one by one to control those we have to go for an extra cost that means extra amount of materials to buy those extra quantities of materials automatically it will increases the maintenance cost so that to control those maintenance cost we have to implement that means we need to invest some quantity of money in the form of this ground development automatically due to those the structural life that means the structural life increases and this service charge decreases and the settlement also very low so that to control those three conditions we have to opt this ground improvement techniques especially this geosynthetics to control dewatering and settlements first of all how this ground improvement techniques are generally categorized that means in the ground improvement techniques we are having different methods when the previously we are discussed through four chapters in those four chapters we are used four different techniques first one is entirely related to this densification that means to have decrease the content of voids so that it is a densification technique in the second one we are discussed about this dewatering techniques it means dewatering means also there may be some quantity of water excessive amount is present in the soil to reduce the excessive amount of uh, water content we have opted different techniques like uh, this well found construction of wells and artificial hydrosmosis and uh, different ca- stone column techniques all those are employed to control this dewatering technique and uh, in the third chapter we have discussed it entirely about this uh, 
replacement of materials whenever we are having a loose soils so that those loose soils are not taking proper loads so that we are replacing those loose soils with the help of this uh, chemical mineral and uh, industrial wastes in the place of those loose soils but in case of fourth chapter totally we are using uh, these uh, different uh, reinforcements in the structure to strength so that those are the one of one by one one by one are simply different techniques for the purpose of improving the structural lifespan and uh, the strength properties in those conditions we are using some of the materials so that those materials having different physical properties chemical properties and uh, structural properties here those materials we are discussing and their properties and uh, due to this application of loads how they will behave and those conditions we have to discuss in this uh, geosynthetics unit first of all removal and replacement normally remove means whenever we are having a loose soil with uh, less structural properties so that those kind of uh, loose soils with uh, less structural properties we need to avoid whenever we are going to construct a structure in those loose soils and uh, less properties uh, automatically those structure will have will get less quantity of lifespan due to these settlement properties and internal arrangements between the foundation levels automatically those will get a good that means a good quantity of uh, failures so that we have to go for removal and replacement normally if the total structure we have to construct a particular area automatically in those areas we have to observe the field content and the water content and the void content after that we have to uh, use the different techniques for uh, improve in the soil bearing capacity and uh, this load bearing capacity after that we have to go for different techniques to improve and uh, structural parameters in those conditions also the ground uh, is not satisfying for load bearing capacity then we need to go for this uh, removal and we dot the top layers and up to a particular depth that means that depending upon the structural load we need to re remove and we have to replace certain quantity of material in place of those conditions and the first one is the consolidation techniques we are having normally consolidation this consolidation techniques we are observed in the chapter 2 especially for a dewatering purposes we have to go for this is sand drains normally at uh, different uh, points in the structure we have to go for this uh, dr sand drains automatically those sand drains will absorb surrounding water and uh, those will collect the water at a particular point from those points we have to remove those content of water and the next one is the stone columns uh, encased and uh, sand and stone columns these stone columns also we are simply using a well in this particular well we are including some strengthened uh, stones that means uh, this gravel or any other material so that due to this variation of the structure and uh, properties automatically the water will be drained into these columns from those columns we have to remove the content of water and in case of uh, some other conditions we need to adopt some mixture of these stone columns and sand columns uh, 50 by 50 percentage next one uh, ppvd polypropylene uh, vertical drains these are also some of the techniques we have observed a simply a pipe like uh, polythene material is injected into the soil those materials having a tendency to absorb the content of water surround the, from the surrounding materials that means whatever the soil is surrounded by this polypropylene or polyethylene materials automatically due to this uh, absorbance uh, phenomena the polypropylene uh, material simply absorb the water and those water will be drained by simply using this uh, vertical drains philosophy and uh, with uh, full surcharge that means full surcharge means whatever the water is having at a particular depth at the particular depth or beyond the depth they need to remove the content of water by using this uh, surcharge principle and the uh, next one ppvd is in vacuum consolidation and uh, partial surcharge also we are having this polypropylene vertical lines having some vacuum consolidation 
that means vacuum means automatically by using pressure and without air this consolidation also takes place by using some high rise mechanical equipment and npvd is non polythene vertical drains and full surcharge npvd is combined with stone columns and sand columns also we have to use means depending upon the properties of the soil whatever they may be first of all we have to understand the conditions of the site and uh, second condition is we have to observe the sub surrounding conditions that means in our soil and uh, surroundings of the soil what are the major technical features we are having and uh, how those technical feature will affect our surrounding structures and our soil we need to focus on those also in some of the conditions we won't have to observe those conditions simply we are observing our soil but after few years we have to face some of the problems due to this surrounding structures and we need to go for some extra we need to invest some quantity of extra money to prevent those from to our soil and this combined with stone columns and sand columns also some of the cases if there is an excessive amount of content of water in those particular cases we need to use this npvd and stone columns and other sand column techniques in combination with one to another that means if a person is not doing that work within a time automatically we have to go for employing any another person by the combination of these two persons the work will be completed within a time or less than the comp required time so that here also they are simply using that phenomena if the one stone column is uh, able to do that particular dewatering work in a particular year or that means in a particular week or months so that they are simply employing a two to three principles and phenomena likely stone column plus uh, sand column and the stone column plus these vertical drains with polypropylene materials and polythene materials so that those are able to do those work in less quantity of time it is a time saving phenomena and the other one we have to go for is solar powered drains this solar powered drains also having a tendency to improve and accelerate the work normally solar power is occurring anywhere and everywhere in the earth surface so that those power we have to utilize in a proper way for the purpose of dewatering why because if we employ a method so that it will consume some quantity of power and other systems of wasting so that whenever we are going for utilizing this solar power automatically it is occurring that it is available in a large quantities with free cost so that these are very familiar for using and next one is the electro osmosis condition it is also very costly process so simply in this process we are using a current is directly pumping into the ground surfaces wherever we are having this content of water automatically those content of water will be evaporated by this due to this power surcharge into the ground levels and vacuum dewatering and dynamic compaction vacuum means automatically we have to go for this creation of huge amount of pressure due to those pressure also some of the water will be removed and the next phenomena is dynamic compaction we need to give huge amount of vibrations by this rolling techniques so that those due to those vibrations also the water whichever is present in between the layers and uh, sub layers those will be removed easily but they consume huge amount of power and materials for uh, employing those procedures and the second one is the geosynthetics uh, with the reinforcing techniques normally geosynthetics means those are a uh, plastic materials or some inorganic materials normally organic materials will simply leached off to the earth but here we are using inorganic materials so that their bond will be so strong and they will not degrade into the earth's crust so we have to utilize those materials for a long period of times these uh, geosynthetic materials are simply encased sand columns and uh, 
encased through stone columns and mechanically stabilized reinforced soil wall comma geo cell and geo web and geo farm all those are the examples for the geosynthetic material utilization in different areas first of all we are having encased sand column such that normally due to this application of pressure and due to huge amount of loads automatically whatever the matter we are keeping on this particular walls that means wall means we are engaged some quantity of sand in the drain soil drains so that due to the application of forces and loads automatically the shape of this sand drain will be changing due to this shear forces or any other we need to control those shapes simply by engaging this encased sand column with the help of geosynthetic materials likely here also we are having stone column also we are having this encased stone column comma mechanically stabilized reinforced soil wall all those are using one phenomena to another phenomena so that those will be having huge quantity of lifespan for production of the structure and a mechanically stabilized reinforced wall is also one of the newly invention to improve the soil bearing capacity and the next ones are the geo cell or geo web normally this geo cells and geo webs are mostly preferable for the construction of this roads and slope stabilizations why because geo cell means one particle is linked with another particle likely there will be some a sari like layers due to those layers automatically those will create some quantity of force and non degradable properties due to those conditions those are employing to this roads and after slopes whenever we are having a this rainy seasons due to this huge amount of flow properties of water under the surfaces those material will be leached off very easily uh, whenever we are having these quantities of material automatically those leached off we have to decrease up to some content so that this geo cells geo webs and geo forms are exclusively utilizing in uh, nowadays for the purpose of protecting this uh, roads and the slopes next phenomena is uh, densification normally densification means we are decreasing the content of voids and decreasing the percentage of water present in the soil simply by including these piles piles means it is a substructure which is giving huge amount of strength to the bridge piers piers bridge piers so that these piles having a tendency to distribute the stresses coming from these pile caps and piles so that those will be having a huge tendency whenever we are having this application of excessive loads on this piers and pier caps those piles have to be affected means normally piles are constructing at a larger depth in the ground uh, due to this intrusion of rain water or subsurrounding waste waters those are having to face a lot of problems due to this sinking whenever the pile is sinking means automatically the total structure have to be sink down and some of the cases we have to observe this cracks and this phenomena of failure so that we have to focus on these piles completely these piles are made up of rcc whenever we are having a structure total structure with rcc if the structure is constructed with wood that means a small case of bridges we have to observe some of the bridges are totally constructed with the help of this wooden panels and wooden small wooden planks so that in those cases we have to utilize this small bamboos and others for the purpose of piles like foundations next one is the steel in the steel itself also we are having a concrete piles for giving huge quantity of stability and uh, in some of the cases we are going for composite structures especially composite means more than one material we are using only concrete is a composite materials why because concrete is a homogeneous material the total materials are 
simply same but in case of uh, rcc it is a composite materials why because we are having both concrete and uh, as well as steel due to those two properties it is a composite material but here we are using a totally completely changed both steel and uh, we are using concrete in nowadays nowadays uh, we are having both steel and uh, bamboo also in some of the cases we have to observe especially in foreign countries uh, for the purpose of uh, a small scale uh, construction projects in uh, uh, forests they are preferring these bamboo structures why because normally bamboo structures having a huge amount of load bearing capacity that means flexural load bearing capacity so that they are simply going for this construction of uh, bamboo structures especially in hilly areas and forest why because in those particular hilly areas and forest areas there will be no movement of vehicles at different positions simply they are using this bamboos by this small scale vehicles and they are constructing the bridges and the next one we are having is chemical stabilization this chemical stabilization previously we have discussed in those particularly we are having a lime stabilization cement stabilization after that uh, chemical stabilization and uh, bitumen stabilization uh, like chlorine stabilization that means chlorine means simply CaCl2 or NaCl they are using and uh, deep soil mixing and uh, jet grouting and uh, injection grouting all those are related to this uh, chemical stabilizations first of all we have to discuss on this uh, lime column normally lime column means uh, the total column having huge content of lime lime acts as a binding material due to those binding phenomena the total material having a good compressive strength bearing capacity as well as uh, here deep soil mixing also we are having in this deep soil mixing also the bottom layers of the earth will be filled with this uh, lime and uh, some of the places we are simply mixing this uh, lime with uh, bottom soils so that those are having some chemical stability and uh, bonding due to those chemical stability and bonding the total earth will be in a hard strata acts as a hard strata next one is uh, electrokinetic stabilization uh, this electrokinetic stabilization what we have to observe is uh, the total stabilization will be done by the help of these machines and uh, some of the current techniques in this particular diagram we have to observe a hard embankment is uh, constructed above the ground surface by utilization of uh, these uh, pile foundations normally embankment having two types on the first phase we are having one, one type of embankment on the second diagram we are having another embankment those two embankments having different utilization of materials first of all on the first figure we are having batter piles means on the ends we are having this batter files for uh, controlling the shear that means whenever the load is applying on the embankment there will be some shear failure to control those shear failures they are using these uh, batter piles to contract those uh, shear forces uh, developing on the embankment structures those are type of constructions we have to observe in uh, especially dams and other uh, projects large projects for construction for storing of water but here in the second diagram we are not having any uh, batter piles simply the total structure is uh, supporting on this pile foundation but in case of the embankment we are having different geo grids so that those geo grids are simply having a capability to control those shear force and neglect those shear force due to those reason these geo grids are simply employed in this particular structure to contract the forces which are coming to this shear phenomena okay we have to understand here the total structure having uh, two separated uh, layers those layers are simply geo grids and the embankment having same slope 
and without batter piles and with batter piles this is the major difference here also we have to observe different structures with embankments and different layers normally this geosynthetics we won't use above the ground level normally we are preferring below the ground level or approximately on the ground level surface by some quantity of cover materials earth cover in this particular first figure we have to observe the total embankment is supported on stone columns normally stone columns means first of all we have to draw this pile bore holes in the particular bore holes we need to drop a huge quantities of stones after we have small layers we have to give compactions to decrease the content of voids so that the stone columns we have to construct according to the structural weight of this embankment but in case of this second content we are having same embankment with some quantity of rice so those quantity of rice will be buried by this sand drains okay this sand drains but in case of first figure we are having only five stone columns but in case of second diagram we are having totally seven sand drains okay seven drains sand drains those sand drains are simply responsible to bear all those loads but here the in the third diagram we are having embankment is totally supported by this uh, ppvd vertical drains but fourth diagram is uh, entirely rests on npvd npvd also some of the types of uh, vertical drains okay those two are having different phenomena ppvd and npvd but in case of uh, first one we are having stone column on the on the another hand we are having this sand drains simply what we are doing here is we are mixing the two phenomena so first of all we are having this stone column phenomena and secondly we are having this sand drain phenomena we are mixing this stone columns with this ppvd and sand columns with npvd so that we have to observe the third diagram is simply having totally a five stone columns in between the stone columns we are having a layer by layer layer by layer ppvd that means polypropylene vertical drains the second diagram also we are having on the another hand embankment is totally rests on this is sand drains plus npvds okay why we are constructing uh, this like means automatically in the olden days we are having only this stone column techniques and uh, sand column techniques sand drain techniques due to those the structural life will be up to a some content 50 to 70 years after the completion of this year we have to reconstruct the total structure why because the total structure we are we have to invest a huge amount of money and work and time and labor and material but after few years the total structure we need to demolish and we have to go for a new one uh, to prevent those early uh, breaking of the item automatically we have to employ some of the methods which will give huge quantities of lifespan compared to the previous structures first of all here we have to observe the total structure is uh, employable in uh, both npvds and uh, ppvds those are responsible for giving huge amount of uh, lifespan by simply acting as a protecting barriers to these stone columns first of all uh, we are having these ppvds so those ppvds will arrest the content of water which was entraining into the soil why because uh, those are simply polythene materials those polythene materials are simply non absorb absorb in nature due to this non absorb nature automatically the water will not allowed into the soil and uh, this due to this uh, in allowance of water automatically the lifespan of the structure will be increases both in cases of stone columns as well as this uh, sand drains okay this is the major advantage by employing uh, this uh, npvds and ppvds along with this uh, stone columns and uh, sand drains
how these uh, geosynthetics uh, are applied in uh, another conditions first of all the application of uh, geosynthetics uh, can be prevised in a typical embankment construction we need to consider this uh, geosynthetics normally application of uh, geosynthetics uh, can be provided in a typical embankment uh, construction normally after this embankment we are having that means on the top of this embankment we are having a small canal so that the whenever this canal is uh, moving on the embankment there may be some intrusion of uh, water and those water will be penetrated into the below the layers of this embankment those will directly cause a small quantity of failures to control those kind of failures and intrusion of this water we need to give some thickness of concrete bed normally concrete bed will arrest the penetration of water through this embankment and this piles a canal is constructed on the embankment at layer of this geosynthetic clay liner of geo membrane whenever we are using this concrete uh, to control this penetration of water so that we have to invest more amount of thickness that means more amount of material with respect to concrete but in case of we are using geo membranes that means geo membranes means a polyethylene sheets normally this polyethylene sheets having a smaller thickness value uh, whenever in our daily homes we have to observe we are using a 40 micron a 20 micron 10 micron polythenes likely they are having some thickness beyond that thickness we have to use some of the sheets so that those sheets will not having a tendency to enter the water because of those are not having any porous pores and voids due to those uh, technique we have to employ this polyethylene uh, sheets the help in the form of this uh, cover to this concrete so that uh, above the geo membrane we need to install this concrete with a less quantity of thickness so that we have to save a huge amount of uh, concrete and automatically we are, when we are saving this concrete it will reply with uh, some economy saving due to those the total structure and uh, this project cost also decreases whenever we are choosing this kind of uh, combination of uh, one with another that means uh, concrete with uh, this uh, geo membrane philosophy first of all we have to observe the total embankment and the application how they are applied the total embankment fill is there to the embankment bottom we are having some foundation with uh, compressed soil on the two scales that means on the left hand side and uh, right hand side we are having some geosynthetic layer on the other hand we are having dryness so that those two are having a tendency to collapse the soil or embankment so that we need to rescue this embankment by simply employing this geosynthetic layer on both hands of the structure so that these geosynthetic layers will having a tendency to protect them against this entrainment of water embankment fill with geosynthetic and pvd alternative to this sand drains normally to control those intrusion of water and collection and uh, convey of this water from one one soil to another soil we are using sand drains but in case of those sand drains what we are doing is we are employing this uh, geo membranes those geo membranes having a tendency so that those are mostly using nowadays to control the total project cost and uh, increase the lifespan of the project but we have to take uh, some preventives why because the total polythene layer is not uh, supplied according to our conditions we have to go for different layers and layers uh, by layer by layer we have to arrange and uh, in between the layer to layer we need to give some quantity of uh, this binding agents 
otherwise uh, at that particular joints the total water will be leaked geosynthetic uh, acts as a filtration and a drainage filtration means normally filter is a me mechanism of dividing coarser particles and this content of water so that here geosynthetic material simply acts as a filtration for the purpose of this drainage and next one embankment fill can also be replaced with lightweight geofoam geofoam means it is a one type of material which is having huge amount of volume with less content of weight so that those are also having a simply volume is there and weight is not there due to those volume and weight philosophy the total structural load acting on the foundation will be decreases so that we need to save some quantity of material with and the second one we are having is geosynthetic engineering which have to be apply for the purpose of ground improvement techniques the choice of appropriate technique for ground improvement depends upon several factors why because we are having different quantities of projects for every project there will be some main themes and sub themes so that we have to choose what is the main theme and what is the sub theme for the purpose of construction if a dam is there the major theme for the dam is storing the water and the second purpose is uh, electricity generation if a building is there the main purpose of the building is to give uh, residential status to huge amount of people secondary status is uh, they have to do some quantities of works in the form of banks and others likely every structure having some main themes and sub themes we have to observe what is the main theme and what is the sub theme according to those we have to choose these different types of geotechnical approaches to the structure first of all the type of soil and the improvement required whenever there is a project automatically for those project we have to observe what is the type of soil involved in those particular areas so that the soil is how much amount of bearing capacity and physical properties and this structural properties and chemical properties all those we have to choose why because in some of the areas due to this huge amount of industrialization and urbanization some of the chemicals are simply intruding into this soil layers due to those intrusion of these chemicals also the structural stability will be weakened due to the weakness of the structural stability the life span will be decreases so that we have to go for these three kinds of properties physical properties chemical properties and structural properties after that we have to go for this choosing of geosynthetic material some of the cases the soil bearing capacity will be increases and in some of the cases due to settlements the bearing capacity also decreases but both need to be consider means in the both cases we have to go for different considerations while we are choosing this uh, geosynthetic materials first of all what they are giving is uh, time and cost also are very important factors time and cost both are very important factors and those two are directly proportional to one to one if the time increases indirectly proportional to one to one if the time increases cost decreases as well as cost increases we need to go for decrement of time which method we have to go for depends upon the severity conditions if the if we need to complete the total project within the year we need to invest some more amount of money with more quantity of equipment and labor and working time the project having a sufficient time automatically we need to do the project in a very sincere and appreciable manner consolidation and installation construction for a long time is not suitable for any project normally for every project we have to do some ground work in the form of this consolidation and installation and construction of this basement and foundation and uh, these uh, columns and other works 
so that when we are getting these conditions in a late way the total project will having some huge number of years that means huge number of months for completion if we are constructing all those conditions in a fast way automatically the remaining work also fast tend next one is the application of huge and heavy equipments may increases the cost why because if for for a, suppose if you are taking a crane the monthly rent of the crane will be in lakhs of rupees so that when we are lating the when we are consuming more quantity of time for constructing the project automatically the project is directly related to these materials and these cranes and other things so that those are also consume more amount of money for the purpose of this rents and other allowances the risk of this non performance or cost of the time leads to very expensive solutions so that we have to control on those things whenever we are going for this phenomenas